A couple of months ago, my friend was checking out the recycling bins at his workplace and discovered something intriguing amongst all the paper and plastic, an old laptop still attached to its charger. He took it home, and upon cleaning it up and plugging it in, he found that it fired up just fine. He has since given it to me for this video, and we're going to check out what he found. This is the Gateway M1615. To start, let's get into its specifications. For the CPU, we have the AMD Turion 64X2 TL56, which is clocked at 1.8GHz on two cores. It was the mid-range offering in AMD's Turion lineup of the time, and rivals some of the lower-end Mobile Core 2 duos as to be expected. As for the graphics chip, we have the fairly capable Radeon Express 1270M, which is one of the more capable iGPUs of 2007. On terms of specs and core clocks, it is very similar to the desktop Radeon X1300, which is pretty good for a laptop of this age. For VRAM, it's using 384 megabytes of the system's built-in memory. And speaking of memory, we have 2 gigabytes of DDR2, which is running at 667 megahertz. It's definitely not a lot, especially when the iGPU is chewing away at it, but this shouldn't be much of an issue, especially with older games. Keep in mind, this laptop supports up to 4GB of RAM should you want to upgrade it in the future. So what exactly was the Gateway M1615 back in its day? Well, it's actually kind of hard to know for sure, as unfortunately a lot of information on this laptop seems to be lost to time. I couldn't find reviews on it or really any information at all other than some manuals and spec sheets. As such, I took to the Wayback Machine to find any information that I could. Taking a look at Gateway's website in late 2007, I found that the M1615 was a part of their retail series of laptops, specifically aimed towards multimedia use. This specific hardware configuration would have run you about 950 USD back in the day, which was quite a lot to drop on a laptop. I'll give it this though, it came with a lot of features that were new at the time, such as HDMI and Bluetooth 2.0. Anyway, let's have a look around at some of the laptop's surface features. First up is the display which is a 15.4 inch 1280 by 800 TFT display. It looks very crisp and vibrant, if a little bit dim. This may be due to age, but I can't say for sure. Going to the side of the laptop, the selection of ports is very substantial, with three USB ports, an SD card, and a PCM CIA slot, HDMI, VGA, Ethernet, and of course, a modem. We also have a pretty standard optical drive on board as well. Opening up the laptop brings us to the keyboard and touchpad, and I'll say, this keyboard is great. It has a great typing feel with a nice layout too, featuring full-sized arrow keys at the cost of the right shift key. But this didn't really bother me. The touchpad is pretty small here, but still quite a bit larger than a lot of laptops I've seen from this era. Above the keyboard, we have some dedicated multimedia buttons, including slide volume controls. Along with this is some top firing speakers, which actually sound pretty decent, if just a little bit stuffy due to the laptop's age. But that's enough on features. Let's get some software on this thing. My friend thankfully already wiped the virus-infested copy of Windows Vista that came with the laptop, and I will now be replacing it with a fresh copy of Windows XP 64-bit, as I think it's a much better fit for this laptop's hardware. Around 30 minutes later, Windows was installed, and after an hour of searching for drivers, I eventually found a source that contained all the drivers I needed. After just a few hours, the system was fully up and running with all my programs and games. Under general usage, this laptop was pretty good. The old hard drive could choke a bit on heavier load, but it was still great for web browsing and general desktop usage in spite of the minuscule amount of RAM. As for video playback, it was a bit of a different story. The best this laptop could manage was 240p, which, well, wasn't exactly the best viewing experience. Still though, it was better than what I was expecting given the age of the hardware. The battery life was practically non-existent. I was lucky to get around 15 minutes out of this laptop from a full charge. Because of this, I may want to consider replacing the battery later on down the road. Well, that's pretty much all on this laptop, so it's time to get into some benchmarks. All footage was captured externally as I couldn't get the laptop's HDMI output to function with my capture card. Can an old laptop from a recycling bin play some retro games? Let's find out. Our first game up is Unreal Tournament 2004, and with the 800x600 resolution and the low settings, we got averages of 48 FPS with 1% lows down to 26. Frame times were pretty good and consistent, and the game was a great experience overall. If you wanted to hit closer to 60 FPS, you could drop the resolution down to 480p, with the exception of graphical fidelity. 
Next up is 2005 system killer, Fear. I ran the game with the 480p resolution with low settings and we got averages of 20 FPS with 1% lows down to 12. As to be expected, the game was pretty much unplayable even at the lowest settings. It's evident that the system lacks the graphics power to play this game smoothly. Next game up is Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2. And with the 480p resolution and the low settings, we got averages of 78 FPS with 1% lows down to 52. Frame times were excellent, with frame rates very rarely dropping below 50 in my capture. The game didn't look great, but the high frame rates were worth the drop in visual quality. And next up we have Half-Life 2. I ran the game with the 480p resolution and the low settings, and we got averages of 32 FPS with 1% lows down to 11. Unfortunately our frame times were pretty poor, with lots of stuttering present, but I'd still call this a borderline playable experience. Switching into DirectX 8 mode could provide much better results, but I've decided to leave that be for today's testing. Next game up is Halo Combat Evolved, and with the 480p resolution and the low settings, we got averages of 47 FPS with 1% lows down to 20. Frame rates were a little inconsistent, but it was very playable nonetheless. Our final game for today is Counter-Strike Source, and I used the built-in benchmark with the 480p resolution and the low settings. We got averages of 44 FPS, with 1% lows down to 20. Frame times were okay, and although it definitely wasn't an ideal experience, it was still playable. Much like with Half-Life 2, you can switch into DirectX 8 mode for higher frame rates. So, looks like this old gateway is a 15 year old treasure after all. It's very usable for some general tasks and some very light video playback, and can even play some of your favorite classics, albeit with the settings cranked down. Overall, this laptop was a great find and it shows that it's often worth it to save tech that's being thrown away. Anyway, that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one.